Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's November the 22nd and we're looking at Peter's first letter and chapter 3. Peter is speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel but he gives teaching which would resonate easily with us Christians. Sometimes the teaching that he would give or the teaching that James would give would be a contrast but in this passage it resonates just exactly with us without any difficulty. Um, in, the first, um, <clears throat> in the first seven verses Peter addresses the wives and the husbands wise first, the ladies first. And then in the second passage it's a more general exhortation where Paul where Peter gives teaching to the whole group of um, people who are uh, disciples of Christ in the twelve tribes of Israel and uh, he gives them teaching which we would easily recognize as Christian teaching as well. The, sometimes uh, the teaching of these apostles um, is in contrast to Christian teaching and at other times it is um, almost perfectly identical. So let's look at the first passage. Uh, previously Peter had been talking about subjection. He talked about us being subject to kings and to governors, to all those that are in authority. Then he turned to servants and said that servants are, be, are to be subject unto their masters in everything. Now he turns to the subject of husbands and wives, or wives and husbands. And he starts, first of all, talking about the women. He says, you are to be subject, in subjection, to your own husbands. There is a limit to the subjection that a woman would have it is only to her own husband. Um, he says, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. That little word conversation there means your manner of life. It, the way you talk is the way you live. It's possible, you see, for a woman to come to know the Lord as her saviour and for her husband to not be following her in this. But it is possible to win him. It's possible to win him for the Lord. Very possible. And what um, <clears throat> Peter says is this, is that by your manner of life you are able to by your without without words but that words you are able by your life to win him for the Lord because these men they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear your your manner of life is kept holy holy to the Lord and holy to your husband and you have the fear of the Lord upon your heart and that means that your husband will be won over to you. He will find in you a great, great treasure. <clears throat> and then he says in verse 3, Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plaiting of hair, or wearing of gold, or putting on of apparel. Now he's not saying that all these things are forbidden. They're not forbidden. When you look at the ancient statutes of the Roman times and the early times, you'll see what a plaiting of hair was. It was the very intricate plaiting which we see today amongst certain women. And there was the, there was the wearing of gold. Very common thing, very common thing. Or the putting on of clothes. He says, don't let the outward adorning and the wearing of gold and the putting of apparel he says let it be the hidden person of the heart which is seen that is not corruptible even the adornment of a meek and quiet spirit which in the sight of God is of great price <clears throat> it's in the sight of your husband a great price too may I say when a woman a godly woman 
adorns herself, not with outward things, but when she has an adornment upon her heart and on her spirit, a meekness and a quietness of heart and a confidence in the Lord and an attitude of continual prayer, that person is very precious. Now there's only been <laughs> a few people that I have ever met that have excelled in this. I could mention two or three names who when you went into their presence you knew you were in the presence of God. That's because of their prayer life you see. You knew you were in the presence of God. And uh, <clears throat> He, Peter says it was like this in the old time the holy women who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection to their own husbands just as Sarah did who obeyed Abraham she called him Lord which was a sign of respect not Lord with a capital L but Lord with a little L whose daughters you are as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. You are not to be overwhelmed in life by stuff. You are to put your trust and your confidence in the Lord. And then he says in verse 7, and just the same, you husbands. You are to dwell together with them in intimacy, giving honour unto your wife, as unto the weaker vessel that's where that expression comes from the weaker vessel she is lighter in body she's generally smaller in stature she generally is more delicate in nature than you but together you are heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered do you know, it's possible, it's possible that in your married life your prayers might be hindered. Oh, there's lots of things that can do that. Lots of things can do that. It's possible for your prayers to be hindered. See to it that there's nothing that comes between you each other and nothing that comes between each other and the Lord. What a glorious blessing that would be. Now I could go on and speak about some of the other parts of the passage, but I won't. Let that just stay in our mind. What is my password for today? Well, I can think of nothing but verse 3 and 4. Whose adorning? Let it not be the outward adorning of plaiting of hair, or wearing of gold, or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden person of the heart. That which is not corruptible even the uh, the ornament of a, a meek and quiet spirit which in the sight of God is a great prize what a wonderful text now look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow have a wonderful day God bless you all bye for now